Welcome to What is Going Om for new thought from the edge of Om. Each week on Om Time's flagship radio show, veteran broadcaster, author, and media consultant Sandy Sedgbeer conducts thought provoking interviews with inspirational authors, artists, musicians, scientists, speakers, and filmmakers who are working at the point where spirituality and science meet consciousness at the very edge of Om. Here is your host, Sandy Sedgbeer. Hello. From probiotics, fermented foods, and ketogenic diets for cancer, weight loss, and longevity, to vampire facelifts and Botox versus Notox for beauty, to O shots, to enhance libido, erections, orgasm, and pleasure in men and women, there are certainly a lot of interesting possibilities emerging in the medical and health arenas. And let's face it, there's also a lot of headline grabbing fads that might look good on the surface, but have questionable evidence behind them. With fake medical websites and spurious claims abounding online, we can't rely solely on Google for our research. And it certainly doesn't make sense to me to base all our decisions on what the FDA or the British National Health Service say either. So where do we go for reliable health information? And how do we know who and what to believe? Well, when it comes to separating facts from fads and fiction, one person I rely on for solid, well-researched information and advice is award-winning physician and global health educator, Dr. Denise Warden, who expertly bridges the worlds of conventional allopathic and advanced alternative medicine. A naturopathic medical doctor licensed in administering both pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals, she's passionate about helping people medical si sorry, interpret medical science so that they can take charge of their health and make informed decisions. Dr. Denise Warden joins me tonight to help us separate some of the current health facts from the facts, provide insights on innovations we can trust, and tell us how and where to find reliable information that will enable us to take charge of our own health. Dr. Donise Warden, welcome. Thank you, Sandy. So glad to be here. You, as an interviewer, know how to pull out information <laughs> from your guest and make us uh, talk in terms and get out of our uh, normal research or medical language so that people can understand. So I always love working with you. Oh, thank you. For start that. with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good place to start. And you yourself have a pretty <laughs> unique skill set in that you not only combine extensive experience in medical research, academics, teaching, public speaking and the media with your practice as a primary care physician, but you're also board certified in clinical nutrition, acupuncture, spinal manipulation, botanical medicine, counselling and homeopathy. Oh, oh, I'm having trouble speaking today. And homeopathy, <laughs> is there a I have for something that? for that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might. So now I, I know that you've been practicing this kind of integrative medicine for quite some time now, but lately we seem to be hearing that term more and more. Is there a bit of a revolution going on that's opening mainstream medicine up to the notion that one size medicine doesn't fit all? Yes, and I, I think it's just out of desperation, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, they, they know that in chronic degenerative disease, we're really failing. We're not doing a good job. We're great in emergency medicine, especially here in the U.S. and uh, the other developed countries. But I will, will tell you that when it comes to heart disease and cancer and arthritis and these diabetes, we're the traditional medical model of just here, take this medicine is not working. So they're reaching out, they want to learn more. Then of course they want it to be evidence-based and I agree, but some things are very difficult to study within the model the way it's built. So, you know, how is it, how can you uh, study something uh, holistically when you're treating the whole body and you have to do several different things at once? So we've got some issues being able to, to prove it out, but um, they are definitely looking. And of course, every individual is different. That's right. And okay, so, so individualized medicine is the only way to go. That's right. 
Yeah, individualised medicine is something that I'm reading more and more about and I do want to get into that later in the programme because I think it's quite exciting but people also need to know, you know, what are the options within that? What what are they looking at? How do they, you know, make your medicine personal to you? But first, I want to look at some of the, the fads and the facts because the internet is the, a wonderful, wonderful invention but... It can also, like most things, be, <laughs> you know, be used to mislead okay. and misinterpret. And, uh, you know, That's people great. really do not know what to believe. So let's start with some of the current food fads and facts, because this is a, something that everybody, regardless of the condition of their health, is interested right. in. I mean, there are so many, um, you know, little, um, you know, uh, fashions that come and go you know I, I was reading that quinoa is so last year because this year we have right. frica, which is a new grain on the block which everyone's talking about right. and we've got kombucha right. and kefir and fermented foods mm -hmm. that are getting lots of attention mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about some of the current fads and which of them have something behind them and which of them are just that you know fads Right, right. I will say in general, the ancient grains we tend to do a little bit better with. Um, you know, our wheats, we have bastardized and some of our newer ways of crops and so forth, we're seeing more and more people reacting to those. But back to your point a minute ago, Sandy, it depends on the individual. Case in point, soy can cause cancer or help jumpstart a cancer in some people and be protective in others. So now that we know more about genomics and epigenomics, we're learning more so that we can get even more individualized. But one first step is making sure that the foods that you're putting in do not cause an inflammatory response because inflammation is the root of all the chronic degenerative diseases that I spoke about before. So if we know we're putting in something that I just read was supposed to be healthy, but it causes inflammation in me, then that's no longer healthy for me as an individual. So we can run IgG, delayed sensitivity food uh, panels. You can do an elimination diet. You know, until we get the DNA down, and I think it'll be a, a while before we get to that amount of detail, um, it is running tests or, or doing research on your own with your own body. So in other words, you're saying, you know, if you really want to try this food, monitor how it might be affecting you. That's exactly right. And if you're not sure and you say, well, I got sick, but I don't know if I caught a flu and if it was really this thing that caused it, take it out, wait about four to six weeks and then try it again. And if it makes you feel bad the next time, you can guess that it's not good for you. Learning to listen to your body is, is imperative with all of these new things and new things because kombucha in one person would be fantastic to repopulate your gut. In another, it could really wreak havoc. So, you know, listening to your body and this whole adage of, oh, it's just a detox reaction. It's just your body, um, you know, when you start this, that you're going to detox. I think many times that may not be the truth, <laughs> that you really need to listen to your body. And if it caused a problem, um, it could be a detox reaction, um, but you'll know in time. You try it again. And how long do the symptoms last? What about um, coconut oil pulling? A lot of people are into this and some say, it, oh, it's just rubbish. And others say, no, it actually does work. No, so there's a lot of science behind it. It's the only medium chain triglyceride oil that we have in our diet as humans. It's the only one. There's not another food that has that piece. It is anti-inflammatory. It fights bacteria and viruses. It does this. It does that. It's fantastic. However, when I do that kind of testing on patients, sometimes they come back with a coconut sensitivity. Now, that's no longer healthy for them. But in general, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's good. And you've got to make sure, you know, how it's processed and manufactured from the company, it's cold pressed, all those things. But in general, um, very healthy. Well, here's the thing. We've heard a lot about, um, you know, uh, bullet coffee, um, you know, swilling right. coconut oil around your mouth because it pulls out all the toxins in the body and in your, you know, your gums, etc. Where are all these fads and all this information coming from? <laughs> So, yeah, sometimes uh, there's a little bit of science behind it. Uh, one big thing that happens is somebody will make a product, 
And I'm not saying this about Bulletproof because that's just a coffee and apple toxin free tox coffee with the, you know, the two ingredients that you put in. But in general, somebody will make a product and they'll, they'll say, look at the studies. Well, the studies were done on some of the ingredients in that product. The study was not done on that particular product or that device. They're just extrapolating information from these other research that's been done, and it wasn't necessarily on the form that's in their product. We don't know if it's clean. We know all those things. So be careful of that. You want to look for if they can, if you can find some, that they actually did a clinical trial on that particular product. Now, a lot of them are not going to do that, Sandy, because once you prove that it may work for a disease, it's no longer considered a nutraceutical. It's considered a drug, and you just lost it. So what kind of company is going to put money into that? It's a catch-22, but I want buyer beware of whenever they're saying, look at all this science behind it. You need to say, okay, the science is on the ingredients, but not on your product. Well, um, you know, what about the other side of that coin where we know that there have been trials that are done and they are suspect because, you know, somebody um, at the FDA happened to be on the board of the company that makes the drug or <laughs> later on right. the drug is recalled, et cetera. That, that's right. So, you know, that's why I'm up at four or five and I'll see an interesting study that comes in. The first thing I do is look at who funded it. Because no matter, even if they are trying to do a clean study, I really, let's just see, put a hypothesis out there and see if it works or not with no judgment involved, you know, the, the, the thought process, they're already what the researchers are already thinking can't help but seep into the way they design it, and especially in the pharmaceutical world. So, you know, you have to look at who funded the study. And if it was by a major university, great, but then you've got to say who at the university and are they sitting on any boards, are they on lecture panels, by what companies, um, just to see – how clear and how clean they are away from a commercial bias. Well, we'll dig into that a little bit deeper after the break. You're listening to What Is Going On. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, and I'm speaking with award-winning physician and global health educator, Dr. Donise Warden, about what's fact and what's fiction in the latest health headlines. We'll be back with more after the break. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. My name is Meera Batra, and this is How I Live United. Many families have come to America for a better life. I advocate for these families with United Way. United Way empowers them to see opportunities available. We help them get involved with their kids, schools, and network within the community. My name is Meera Batra. I help families see opportunity and succeed. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Welcome back. Dr. Donnie Swarden, before the break, you were saying, don't just look at the source of a study, but look at the people involved in setting up that study. How, do, how does the average person find access to that kind of information? So it's fairly simple nowadays. You were talking about the Internet, and it's great. And they, they need to not be um, feel too overwhelmed. But if they go to PubMed, that is a good resource. Uh, it's free, P-U-B-M-E-D. 
and type in, they want to look up autoimmune or they want to look up cancer, a certain type of cancer, type it in and the studies will be there. And some are out of Europe, which are great uh, because they do some unique things there and some are from here. Once you're there, um, it tells you who the author is. You can click on the author and see all about them, see their bio and, and where they're coming from. So fairly point and shoot at this point. And reading the studies, just read the abstract, which is kind of the take home, and then they has a conclusion at the bottom that's kind of what you're after, um, unless you're a researcher and you, you get to know the language. But there's a lot of information there, a lot of interesting things that, that so, listeners can find. Would that kind of information also contain whether the person involved in that study is associated with the FDA or has any conflict of interest? No. So you, it, will, it will tell who funded the study. Uh, it does do that. And you can look up the person, click on the person, you can see their affiliations. So if they are affiliated with any of these organizations, then you may be able to say it. Otherwise, see it. Otherwise, just Google them. <laughs> to put in FDA and their name and see what boards they sit on. If they're with the university, though, um, usually they're, they're pretty strict of not letting them get too involved in commercial or government, uh, but, but there will be some crossover. I will say this. I will say Sorry. this. The majority of researchers by nature want to find the truth, but sometimes um, when they find the truth, some studies are buried. That means it never got published because it didn't say what they thought they wanted it to say. Um, and so that, that's, that's, that's incorrect. I mean, we should know all of it. The tobacco industry hid for years, and now we know the sugar industry has done the same thing. They've hidden what they knew by their own studies, and they got to bury them because it was their studies. They funded it and paid for them. Well, I just read today about, uh, you know, the whole thing about dark chocolate being really good for your health and how much money mm -hmm. Mars have put into setting up those studies so that they can sell sure. more dark chocolate. I mean, it just yeah, goes absolutely. on and on, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> although, it does. although in the light of what we've been hearing the last few weeks, you know, it seems to me that transparency is the order of the day and people are beginning to get more vocal when they come across something That's that correct. isn't transparent. So good for that. That's right. Well, That's before right. we delve into some of the latest research and the emerging approaches to life-threatening diseases, I want to talk a little bit about some of the innovations in what I guess we could call the life enhancement area, weight loss, mm -hmm. cosmetics, mm -hmm. skin care, and sex. I mean, mm -hmm. you told me about this O-Shot, which I'd never heard of before. <laughs> Tell us about it. And how... Yeah. How useful is it really? Right, right. Well, so regenerative injections, those are injections that try to use um, substances that are less harmful, if harmful at all. And the O-Shot usually uses PRP, which is platelet-rich. It's your own blood. We spin it down, get a uh, platelets out of it. Um, I have not done it in my practice, but I have some uh, physicians who are used, starting to use it, and they said they have had a good results. Now, what does good results mean? Does that mean 70% of the people found 70% of, of, of help with it or an increase in libido or ability to orgasm? We don't know. We don't have those statistics yet. It's too new. But it's, it's being, uh, you know, just clinically used enough that it's starting to make a little splash and the doctors are saying, hey, you know, I think this is worth continuing to do because they're seeing some changes with it. Now, are there double-blind placebo-controlled studies for long-term on it? Nope, not at all. But, uh, you know, clinically, and that's what we have to look. There's historical use, something Chinese medicine that's been used forever. Then there's clinical use, what doctors are seeing happening in their offices. And then there's that here's what we studied and here's what we found category. Hmm. What about uh, ketogenic diets, not only for weight loss, but also for cancer prevention? Oh, big fan, big fan. So if your listeners want to learn more, if they want the deep uh, uh, understanding, they go to Dr. Thomas Seafried's book, The Metabolic Theory of Cancer. And what that book tells you in great detail is that cancer is only fuel with sugar. It's the only thing it eats. It doesn't eat protein or fat. When you take the sugar out, 
cancer can't grow. And I have multiple patients that their tumors are shrinking. Um, they're going into remission because they're on the ketogenic diet. Um, it's also being used, uh, Dr. Dan, uh, Dominic D'Agostino with a D, Agostino. He's at a University of Southern Florida. He's being funded by the Department of Defense to look at our super soldiers. How do you make the NASA astronauts and our Navy rebreather, uh, Navy SEALs, uh, be stronger, better, faster. How do we help them recoup? It's the ketogenic diet. So the same diet for the athletes that I'm working with is the same diet for the cancer patients is the same diet. If you need to lose weight, you will because your body's going to switch from burning carbs and sugar into burning fat. And if you don't need to lose weight, you won't. You hold on to your muscle. You have energy. So I'm a very big fan of it in certain instances. It's kind of hard to maintain. So you've got to, I usually say, cycle it, do it for a few months, get to where you want, and you're doing well. If you love the diet and it's easy for you to do, you can, can continue. But if not, it's okay. You come up for a while. You come up for the holidays. And I think the body sometimes likes a little shake up anyway. So then go to a Mediterranean-style diet or some other healthy kind of diet. The body's all about rotation. Rotate your foods. Rotate your diet, you know, the way you're eating. Rotate your exercise program. It's about variety. So, okay, if somebody has cancer and wants to go on a ketogenic diet, then clearly they're going to mm -hmm. be medically supervised. The average person who might want ketogenics as a kind of prevention or as weight mm -hmm. loss, um, mm -hmm. how easy is it to find the best information? Let me tell you the website that I think uh, is the best explanation and clear, and I agree with its principles. I've talked with all the researchers. It's called ruled.me, R-U-L-E-D dot me. It's an easy way to get started, to understand it. There's some free recipes, those things, and now it has blown up so much. <laughs> That's part of that Internet problem that you were talking about. Um, there's all kinds of claims and ways to do it and this and that. You can find recipes on there, but if you're calculating it or getting it on your app on your phone, um, there are apps that will really help regulate how much fat, protein, and carb you're getting and keep you clinically where you're, you're not starving your body of uh, main nutrition. The one thing I do see with ketogenic, though, um, people, because you're not eating as many vegetables because those have carbs in them, um, well, you need to be on a multivitamin, multimineral. I do see some issues with it there. Uh, but otherwise, if you're on that, uh, people are doing extremely well and uh, quickly losing weight and feeling great and keeping it off. Well, you just mentioned a word that I was going to bring up, and that is about um, supplements. You know, we yeah. hear so much uh, from the mainstream saying supplements, you know, are just a waste of money. Uh, you might as well just mm -hmm. pour them down the toilet for all the good they're doing your body, etc. Um, right. How do we know what's good and what isn't good in a supplement? Well, you know, you you there's a couple of things. There's only about 16 individual ingredients that like vitamin C, um, like for, you know, scurvy to prevent scurvy, uh, folic acid for neural tube defects. There's certain ones that there's no debate, that there's a deficiency there. It can cause a medical problem. There's only 16. The rest of them, uh, we have a lot of science like resveratrol. A lot of studies have been done on resveratrol. But here's the issue, too. What do you need as an individual? What do you really need? And then it's the quality on the supplement itself. And the industry needs to clean itself up, needs to do a better job. Nobody regulates it. It's regulated as a food, which means it's not really regulated. And if there's a problem, somebody calls in and says, I just had a problem with your product. It's up to the company to decide whether they want to report that to the FDA. They're supposed to, but who knows? So quality control is a very, very big issue in the supplement industry. That's why in my clinic, um, I have a certificate of analysis and an in-batch run on everything that's on my shelf. I know they did the testing, that there's no arsenic and lead and microbes like bacteria and, you know, fungal growing in those. And I also know that it should have in there what it says it has on the bottle. And you cannot trust that in a lot of companies. Well, then what your does listeners the can ask for if you take something on it. Yeah. If you take something on a continual basis, you should ask the company, not where you bought it, because they're not even going to know what you're talking about. But most of the time. But if you ask the company to give you a C of A, a certificate of analysis to show they did at least the basic kind of testing, 
um, they should do that. It doesn't cost them much to do that, and you're not asking for anything proprietary. If they refuse, you switch companies. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. Let's talk about vampire facelifts and no tox <laughs> versus Botox. I mean, let's face it, everybody, <laughs> everybody wants to look as good as they can. Some people are prepared that's to go all right. the way and under the knife, and some aren't. What is available to those that, you know, just want to look healthy, <laughs> don't want to go too right, far? Right, right. <laughs> So that, again, that, that O-shot using your own blood, your own platelets, that's what the vampire face, facelift is. We've been doing it in joints for a while um, to help regenerate. Um, I got a little afraid of it, wondered about autoimmune uh, jumpstart with some of it because some of the basic science was telling us we might watch out for that. But I'm not really seeing it in the long run uh, that it's causing it. I stopped doing it when I knew that. But it's been out long enough and almost enough data for me to say I'm going to start doing it again. <laughs> But uh, it, the vampire facelift is using your own blood and your own platelets, and it has growth factors in there, molecules that help our body repair itself. That's the thought process. But the aesthetic uh, practitioners that I work with that have been using the vampire facelift, they say they're not as excited about it anymore. They think they have other things that do better. They think the fillers and if they use Botox, they feel that works better, and a lot of them are kind of jumping out of the vampire facelift. It's a cool name. Everybody got excited. Everybody wants to do the new thing, but um, it didn't work as well as, as we wanted. But I will say to PRP, that platelet for um, hair regrowth and male pattern baldness, if you catch it before it's too far gone, is, is doing quite well. Um, so that's, that's one to know about. But as far as your skin and your face, uh, I like mesotherapy. I like the needling technique that I learned in France and Italy, and the Germans use it. It's all natural injections. We're just stimulating your body's own collagen. Therefore, you look healthy. You look maybe 10 to 15 years younger than what you are. You don't look like your face is, you know, that you have a big fan on your face and it's been pulled back too tight, and your lips aren't, you know, three times the size of normal. It depends on what you're after. If you want that, you go get it. You're listening Last to what note. is going on. Oh. When we come back, Denise, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer. My guest tonight is award-winning physician and global health educator, Dr. Denise Warden. And we're talking about the latest health fads, facts, and promising new innovations in modern medicine. Still to come, functional foods and individualized and regenerative medicine. We'll be back with more after this break. The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. I'm Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family. And then, boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America, and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back, Dr. Donise Walden. We cut you off just as you had one more thing to say on that subject. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it's something everyone likes to hear about, Botox, right? Um, let me just say it's the most, most lethal poison known to man. It's a potent neurotoxin. It kills brain cells. Um, and so we're injecting it into the face. But the thought has been, and it has a, a fairly safe profile, 
uh, for the short term that it's been used. What we don't know is long-term use. What we also know is um, we were they were told at the beginning that it would stay local, only wherever you put it in that one area. Well, that's been proven to be wrong. A new study just came out, a recent study that says, uh-oh, um, it looks like it's not staying put. It's moving between nerve cells. And so that's raising a possibility that that migration could be happening in humans as well. There were some other studies out of the country that it was shown circulating in the liver, which means it's going throughout the body. So I I, from day one, have said I'm not willing to inject that toxin near the brain or anywhere. Um, I'd rather have a few wrinkles than not know my loved ones. Um, so, you know, this, these new studies are, are big, but I will say this, it works. And it, there, it's a $2 billion business last year, $2 billion, just in Botox, not even the other neurotoxins that are out there besides Botox that do the same thing, Botox alone. Oh. Well, what about no tox? I mean, you talk about that quite right. a bit. Is there an alternative yeah. that works? Yes. So that mesotherapy technique, the needling technique that I'm talking about, that stimulates the body's own collagen reproduction. And is there something um, that we can use that is um, safe to relax the muscle? And that's how that lets that big, you know, those big wrinkles go away. There are new toxins. Um, I have one in a topical product now. It's a cobra venom, and the cobra venom is actually neuroprotective. That means it's being studied because it looks like it protects those brain cells, those nerve cells. That I'm willing to do. It's slower than Botox. You have to do it all the time, you know, every night. Uh, but it can relax it and soften those wrinkles as well. But the needling technique of those who understand the mesotherapy technique and anti-inflammatory natural ones um, does very well. And then there's natural products now that actually work. Used to be the organic things that we'd go by and we'd try. You'd just say, well, <laughs> it didn't really make my skin look as nice as I wanted. So uh, we, we have gotten better, developed skincare line um, that actually is clean and actually is efficacious. So we have choices. One of the things that um, bothers me about the medical industry is how our choices are being taken away from us. Our choices are um, governed to some degree by the FDA, the National Health Service in England, the medicines control agencies, all of the government bodies. Now in England, the National Health Service has just announced that it's closing down its homeopathy clinics in any of its hospitals. There aren't that many, but there are a few. Now I've used homeopathy for 40 years and I swear by it the Queen the royal family it goes back to Queen Victoria they are big yep. opponents of homeopathy Prince Charles very big yeah yes very much so yeah so yep. you know when organizations that are supposed to be protecting our health come out with uh, information that is misleading like that you know I mean mm -hmm. what do you have to say about that we can't stop them Right. So, so you know, I looked into this because I work a lot with, um, you know, companies from Europe. And uh, so really, England was kind of an outlier. Most of Europe started kind of going this way. It wasn't just homeopathy, but it was all herbals. And what it is, they're not banning it. They're just saying, we're not going to pay for it underneath the insurance or the National Health Service. We're not going to pay for it anymore. There aren't enough trials or studies to show that it works. So we're cutting it out so that they can save money or spend more money on pharmaceuticals. But in Germany, um, they still, they kind of went through that. It was, I guess, some kind of revolt of the public. Or I don't know quite what happened, but it is still, most of homeopathy is still paid by their national health system. Um, and so it's not being banned for use. People can still get it, but you're going to have to pay for it. It won't be paid for by insurance, but. so to say. But the insidious part of that is yep. by declaring they're not doing it, they're saying, right. I've got no faith in it. And some people will that's believe exactly that. That's exactly right. And that's what they've said. Uh, we do have new studies and we're actually conducting, I'm in, I'm in the middle of being the, one of the principal investigators on new studies that we're doing here in the States on homeopathy on injectables. There's a new company out of Germany. Evert, that we um, we are actually doing clinical trials and, and documenting it so that we can go back and say, look, just because you're not going to say that hundreds of years of use isn't enough for you, historical use, right? Here are some studies, and this is what we're seeing and doing. And I'm lecturing 
all over the country training doctors in this because we really do need natural, wonderful medicine that is efficacious, doesn't cost much, and it doesn't have the side effect profile that pharmaceuticals do. But we don't have well, the science behind it. They're right. We don't. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Let's talk about functional foods um, in case people don't know what they are. Just tell us. Well, it's kind of a terminology that's coming around that maybe you could make a supplement or a powder or something that actually takes the place of food. I never, ever, ever think we're going to get there. But functional food is using food as medicine. But the term is being used by um, doctors or companies that want to sell products. So, and that's okay um, if it's for a specific disease and we know that that particular uh, product does well. So functional foods is helping the body function better is the process behind it. But, but it's nothing new if you're using good medicine for the right person in the right place with the right thing. It's all functional medicine. Yeah, I was going to say foods are medicine. Right, exactly. It's our best medicine. Our yeah. best medicine. It's still the best preventer and some of the best treatments that we can get. Our body knows what to do with vitamins and minerals and proteins and fats. It, the reason why most medications cause a side effect or a reaction is because the body doesn't recognize it. And you realize almost 80% of pharmaceuticals are made from a botanical or it's a, it's a synthetic, and it's a synthetic analog of it, but because it's not the real deal, the body goes, I don't know what this is, and we have side effects where we don't have side effects, as many side effects, with the natural substances. We were built to, to be synergistic with these <laughs> things that grow Absolutely. from the ground. Absolutely. Yeah. What about, I mean, you know, so many foods now are being recognized. I mean, we know it's all foods yeah. and medicine, but some are being recognized uh, now for you know, curcumin and various different things that people have been using, right. herbs, spices. Um, you know, as you mentioned, resveratrol earlier, uh, grapes. Yeah. Um, is there yeah. anything new and exciting that uh, you want to talk about? Mm. You know, I think the learn we work more we learn about the microbiome, and that's just the bugs plus the bugs' genetics. In fact, they they have far more genes, five to ten times more genes than we do than our DNA. We're mostly bugs, so those bugs and what we feed those bugs is very important for the microbiome. Considering most of this body you see sitting in front of you is a bunch of bugs, not our DNA, not human cells. So um, things like kefir. Probiot probiotics, yogurt, uh, the, um, the uh, tempeh, anything, the fermented foods, sauerkraut. I think that we're going to see more and more on that line. And the one food that is really not debated much on either side, whether it's traditional medicine or alternative, is broccoli. Broccoli is a natural chemotherapy, and it's also helped with treat. So it treats and it prevents when we're talking about cancer. Now, we know that would go into other diseases as well. So I tell patients, if you get broccoli sprouts, because now you've got the live enzymes, because eating raw broccoli is hard to do. It's a little, little bitey for most people. But if you get broccoli sprouts, you can grow them your own, a little handful every day. That is natural prevention and treatment for those cancer cells that are floating in all of us. So I really like those. We spoke earlier about individualized medicine, and I was looking at the Mayo Clinic's website earlier, and they seem mm -hmm. to have a number of innovations going. They've got some very interesting videos and programs. Um, they've got a biomarker discovery program, a microbiome program, a pharmacogenomics program, the right. epigenomics right. program. Tell us a little bit about these and um, how exciting they are. What can right. they show up? Right. So, so first in saying that most of the tests that they're doing, those of us that are more forefront in medicine, we're already doing in our offices, in our private practices. So it's nothing that over the top, but what Mayo Clinic does is start collecting the data and doing the studies, which is fantastic. You know, hats off to them. Uh, but um, this is already this is already parts of medicine that we're utilizing that data. So remembering that genes are only a blueprint, right? And only studying the genes without the the dynamics of what turns them on and off. That's the epigenetic piece is just part of the picture. Um, so we've got to study a lot of things around that. And I love energy, uh, the epigenetics. I 
I, I think my first time I lectured about it was over 10 years ago. Got excited about it then. We know a lot more now about epigenetics and what we're finding is these environmental toxins, the toxins in our food, the heavy metals, the phthalates, I, you, a whole other show, Sandy, on that, which would be a depressing show, but we have hope. But, but those things are affecting our epigenetics. And here's the scary thing is that if, if, a, if, a, if a woman or a man, it depends on, you know, in the cycle of reproductive cycle, but especially if a woman, if she has an epigenetic a toxin, it shows an epigenetic change for at least three generations. That means if she did something, especially in the studies showing with ovarian problems, then that carries through for three generations. doesn't stop with her when she dies and gets cancer. So we're learning more. It's exciting. Uh, the tests are available. You know, the 23andMe and those guys, they give you, you know, what your ancestry is. But once in a while, when they're allowed to, when something has been documented, then they can send it to you and say, hey, according to your genetic profile, we know this now. Puts you more at risk for this disease or that disease. It doesn't tell you treatment, but it tells you that. But pharmacogenetics is something I do on most of my patients. It's which drugs, if you get sick or you have to take a medication, which drugs should you not use, which ones are, mm, okay, try to find something else, and which ones are the best ones to use, from an antibiotic to chemotherapy to whatever that medication is, and that's valuable information. So uh, we're getting more and more information every day. It's coming in quickly. It's exciting. It's robust. But right now, if your listeners go to, uh, you know, functional medicine doctors or naturopaths, anybody that works with epigenetics and genomics, we can run quite a few things now and find out, you know, what type of exercise is best for you and what type of a combination of foods, you know, those kinds of things and risk factors that now we start saying, what are the natural ways to prevent these diseases? You're listening to What Is Going On. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, and I'm speaking with award-winning physician and global health educator, Dr. Denise Warden, about the latest health fads, facts, and promising new innovations in modern medicine. We'll be back with more after this break. Conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Spiritual, metaphysical, green living, psychic, alternative healing, life coaching. Do any of these or similar terms apply to your business or cause? If so, you are in a niche market with a very specific audience. Conscious Gate PR is the world's leading conscious public relations agency. With a global reach of over 4 million and growing, we offer comprehensive media campaigns to our targeted market. Learn more at ConsciousGatePR.com. Conscious Marketing for Conscious Minds. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. A chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. Welcome back. Dr. Denise Warden, you mentioned something earlier that uh, really made my ears perk up, and I'm sure our listeners too. Regenerative medicine. As I understand it, that's about rejuvenation, uh, replacement, 
and regeneration. So tell us what is going on in that arena, apart from what you told us earlier about the O shot and uh, vampire. Um, <laughs> right. Faces. So that terminology is being used widely talking about that PRP or that platelet rich plasma and helping the body to regenerate itself with its own material, its own growth factors, its own, you know, molecules. So that is part of it. But regenerative medicine in a larger scale is what does the body need? What can we give it that helps it do its job? Because it's very good at, you know, we're going to slowly age, but we should slowly age and we should age well. So regenerative medicine or the things, individualized medicine, looking at that individual from their genetics, to their foods they're eating, to their their mind, body, spirit. Are they not happy and healthy? In fact, we're seeing stress or unhappiness is one of the epigenetic things that puts us most at risk for diseases. Epigenetically, you want to turn on the bad genes, start being upset about something. And the more happy we are, we can actually help quiet those down. So regenerative in the sense that any and all things that that individual needs. That to me is regenerative injection. But most people are calling that for the injections that we do. So stem cells are involved in this, yes? Well, stem cells by, you know, if they're human stem cells are still, you know, illegal. But um, so a lot of people call a lot of this stem cells and it's really not and have a problem with that. So you've got to know the difference between stem cells and different medications or different things that can be done. So um, first of all, you have to, to know that piece. There are some stem cell clinics doing some things. Um, but with stem cells, you've got to be careful because it's carrying a lot of information, good and bad. So that's why I kind of like the peptide injections. You can't get those in this country, but peptides are just taking out the particular molecules you want and injecting them back in instead of taking back in the whole stem cell and, and putting back in bad information. So the jury's still out. We will find more, but I think we have to be careful with stem cells and we have to be careful what we're even calling stem cells. Um, these new injections, uh, the homeopathic injections that are FDA registered in America are absolutely amazing. They're registered for mild depression, for um, um, inflammation or pain, for nerve pain. I mean, we've got tools that don't have the side effects or the risks that are working well. That's what we need to hear more about a lot more about right 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 and you know thinking about just the basics is taking you know we're all about the no carb no no gluten that's true but looking in you can make raw veggie bread uh, there's some unique things out there there's so many things on the internet and recipes and all we don't have to struggle anymore and when you go out to eat if you're on the ketogenic you get a ribeye steak not saying you do that all the time and some people don't need red meat that much but others might so Individualized medicine is safe and is and as effective as we can get. That's regenerative medicine. There's another aspect to uh, individualized um, medicine that I want to touch on, and this goes beyond uh, you know everything that we've been talking about with regard to health and healing, and it's less tangible. Too, um, I think it was last year, your husband the composer, producer, mm -hmm. musician Barry Goldstein was on this show talking about his book, mm -hmm. The Secret Language of the Heart, how to use music, yeah. sound and vibration as tools for yeah. healing and personal transformation. Now, I happen to know that since you two met, you have put your medicine <laughs> into his music and he's put his music into your medicine. Yes, and between the two of have. you, you are <laughs> creating some interesting things. So tell us about those. Yes. Yes. So, you know, we're actually um, about to launch an online study for one of Barry's CDs because he has a proprietary delivery system that's quite unique that kind of works with the brain. It does work with the brain waves and the heart rate, um, you know, is working with the brain and the heart. And we got that in conjunction with um, one of our uh, PIs on it is from Duke University, and he's got a study with MD Anderson that they're about to kick and off. And so it's exciting. We're getting research behind what we know already works. When you entrain with music, it's a universal language. It brings you into this parasympathetic, relaxed state. And then guess what? 
the miracles happen, the miracles that your own body knows how to do when it's not being told you need to run from a bear and produce cortisol and the stress hormones. When it's in this I'm safe, I'm happy zone, that's the amazing body and what it can do. And you know what? There's not a molecule, a drug, a natural substance, or anything that's better than that the right dose in the right place at your own pharmacy. So all of these things that we want to study that help your own pharmacy, that's kind of like homeopathy and music and food that helps your own pharmacy do what it needs to do. And it's exciting. It's the wave of the future of medicine, and that includes frequency medicine, you know, cold lasers or other devices. We're learning more and more, and we know more about these frequencies and what they can do. But we've got to be careful. There's a lot of this this, uh, frequency causes this and that, and there's no science behind it. And that's why there's been some black eyes over it. But there is a lot of science behind those frequency medicine devices Um, when we're talking about cold lasers and others. There is science. And so I'm excited about that as well. Well, you know, we're moving into the realms of the subtle now, aren't we? When we start talking yes. about frequency and vibrational medicine and things yes. like flower yes. remedies and homeopathy, right. you know, they tend to have a, a holistic whole body effect. Um, you know, how much right. how much of this, you know, also has to do with state of mind? Um, you know, you talked about, uh, you know, when one is in the right place, you know, listening to music or whatever, um, when one is in the right mm-hmm. place because one is happy with one's life, one is at peace with one's life. Um, you know, I don't, I don't believe that disease, disease can take hold in those circumstances. And if, if you are, if you do contract something or you have something, then the body's own amazing immune system can kick in if we're not being, you know, freaking out about this, whatever just happened, or I caught the cold or this or that, or this disease. The body is amazing. It reminds me every day when I can have somebody come in and have had chronic pain for 40 years or 50 years, World War II vets, and put a device on them that just changes that and they actually don't get in the way with their belief system and and that the placebo is real because it activates your own molecules but to be able to do that and how quickly the body heals immediate in some instances and so that's that's the beauty of it and and so when you ask how much does mindset have to do with it i think it's the biggest piece it can work against you more than anything else. And that's proving out in the epigenetic studies. It's showing that what we do to our gene expression, we've got the studies to show what stress does with that. So that, there you go. There's a good stu- There's a lot of good studies on that, right? So we say, mm-hmm. let's look at ourselves and believe in our own bodies and believe and our neurochemistry and our gastro, our microbiome, our bugs. We've got to be nicer to our bugs because, remember, they're not us. They're not us. <laughs> but we're going to – the microbiome, we're learning more and more how to talk to them and be happy. But the part that's us, um, that, that percentage, 10% of the DNA, you know, part of us, everything to me goes back to the spiritual mind-body connection because – in a clinical practice, I see things happen that should not happen by the book. You open up the medical book, that's not, I, it can't happen. There's not a pathway. There's not a study. There's not something to show me that this is how and why that happened. But it, it happens. And, and that is the power of your own belief system and the power of that placebo effect, which is real. What is the thing that is exciting you most about everything that's emerging right now? Oh, good grief. You know what? It gets simpler. And, and this is interesting. The more science I know, the more that we know about the genes, the more we know about epigenetics and transitional technologies and all this stuff, it's, it, to me, the more I know, the more I realize we don't know. And I realize how important the basics are. If you had to ask me, you know, if you could only pick, you know, six things in your medicine cabinet, it'd be a probiotic, a fish oil, it would be an, a natural anti-inflammatory, probably be enzymes um, to help speed up the reaction. You know, there's a few things. So it's, we're forgetting the basics. We're getting so, oh, look at this new thing. Let's try that. 
oh, here's something new. There is nothing new. There, everything's coming from plants unless they're a synthetic molecule or homeopathy. There is nothing new. And we've got to get back to the basics. Take care of your mind, your body, your soul. Eat diversity. And this is something, you know, I do know that dietary diversity, we've got to do that. How many people do you know that say, I can't eat this, I can't eat that? And they're eating the same things. So they're getting a lack of different vitamins and minerals because they're not eating a, an array of foods. And they're getting bombarded with all kinds of pesticides and, res, uh, and herbicides on those particular foods. So your, your toxins, you're not even varying those. So a wide, wide range of foods as much as you can if they're not allergic or, you know, you have a problem with them. I think we've forgotten that too. So, Sandy, it's getting back to the basics. Basics, Do your yeah. exercise, something every day, yoga, move. It's the basics, sunlight, moonlight. Our, our hormones are regulated by those, those pools from the moonlight and the sunlight, grounding, touch nature, get the electromagnetic um, field com- connecting with that and getting some electrons going for energy. It's back to the basics. Connect with nature, sun, you know, moon, your foods, and your emotional, spiritual connections. That's the best medicine. So I know all this, these wonderful things, and I love keeping up with the new science. And, okay, this might help here, this might help there, but I think Hippocrates said it best, that wise yeah. physician, yeah. you're just helping the body, you're just getting out of the way so the body can do the work. Denise Warden, we're out of time now. Thank you so much for your contribution to today's show. It's always, always interesting. For more Thank information you, about Dr. Denise Warden and regular updates on the latest health news, sign up for her newsletter at www.drwarden.com. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer. Thanks for joining me today. And I hope you'll join me again at the same time next week. Till then, it's goodbye from me.